Uh, this weekend, uh, a couple of us went to the movies to see the number one film in the country, Insidious the Red Door. That was me and Steve. Uh, Steve, now, you had seen which of the movies before we went into it? I only saw one, uh, and I liked one. One was like, yeah, like, kind of an important movie for me only because. I always despised James Wan before that movie. And then I'm like, oh, wow, James Wan's really good. This is a really right cool here. horror movie. Yeah. yeah, And it flipped me from then on. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm down for James Wan. And I've been proven pretty much right. And it's kind of a weird, like, because that's his, his career just turns on that movie. Like, literally, yeah. it just, it's a fulcrum. Because yep. yeah. he did Dead Silence before that, which is dog shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and, I don't care for that one. And mm -hmm. saw, I mean, the Saw stuff. I and mean, then, yeah, his, yeah, his involvement in the Saw films. <laughs> so, but you know, but that movie came out. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I never, I, I think I meant to watch the sequel that I didn't. And then, then it just was like, how many are they releasing? And then, yeah, for whatever reason, this movie came out this weekend. I wanted to see something for the show. I didn't know it was going to be number one at the box office. Right. And I know that you guys talked about indie last week. So like, I'll go see this this new one. And I was excited about it. Yeah, totally. I mean, I did. I like got ready for this movie i watched all four over the weekend the first three i had you were seen, ready for freddy i was totally ready for freddy and then i was like uh oh that's the insidious monster it's not <laughs> freddy at all i watched all the wrong movies uh no I, I had seen one through three four came out like 2018 and i, I just you know kind of whatever but it's this franchise is really interesting because i feel like after that first movie it was that classic thing of like, oh man, everybody loved that Lin Shay character, you know, mm -hmm. playing Elise the the medium, and oops, we killed her at the end of that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like, how do we continue these movies and make sure she's still a presence in them? So it was interesting to look back and see that like one and two are basically just connected. It two takes place right after one, and they figure out ways to have her in there, and then three and four kind of smartly are both prequels to insidious with the mm -hmm. fourth one being like i was calling it the rogue one of these movies because it backs up right into the start of part one but this is this movie insidious the red door is the first direct sequel to part two and i gotta say you know i i had a good time some decent scares i do oh. think yeah him just like full-on insidious you yes that would have been kind of great i mean and then, like, maybe Patrick Wilson's character is staying a little closer to the college. Because part exactly. of the movie is, like, you know, it starts with, like, he drops the kid off at school. Ty Sheridan, or Ty uh, Simpkins. Sim Simpkins, yeah. Ty Simpkins, again, playing the son, which was cool. Um, but it's, like, a days-long road trip. So yeah. then Patrick Wilson goes home. And for most of the movie, they're, like, ge geographically, like, disconnected. Which means, like, Patrick Wilson's in it a little less. Not as much, but there's less, like, interaction between them. Um, and for me, it kind of, like, I think we both felt this way, Steve. Like, the lights came up and we were like, oh, it's over with? Like, it seems to miss that, like, third act, now there's a bit more trouble. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed the movie a lot. I think that there was, I, I just think that, like, I like the idea of that other realm. I do think that Wilson, and I think it does a very good job of directing this movie, but you could tell... He wasn't terribly inventive in the further realm to me. You know what I mean? Like, and that's it's something just is I what it is. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's what you've seen before, which I, I get because like the sequel, but you, maybe you want to push that a little bit visually. Yeah. Uh, there's some cool shots of the movie. Not to say that he's like a, a lame duck director or anything like that, but I kind of wanted a little bit more there. And I do, there's some cool stuff about like the, this thing following him in the real world on the college campus again like i said yeah. is is where it kind of gets cool and then we kind of keep going back to the other part of the movie uh if i may is sort of like the the audience is way ahead of the characters for a lot of it because right. like there's like some mind could so we've some forgetting about what the other movies were about and then like but we the audience are like oh it's a it's insidious, it's insidious. yeah you're, you're, five, being, actually. you're being haunted <laughs> exactly it's a, guys it's a haunting <laughs> so a little bit of that i mean I, I think it's totally worth renting if you're a fan of these movies um i think that the, there are enough scares to keep it kind of worth it and i do think it's i do think it's well crafted enough and, and you do get lucky with ty simpkins because sometimes you can recast you you have to recast that kid because the kid actor just doesn't age well he aged into a pretty good like adult-ish actor you know yeah yeah no i was i was really invested in all the the college stuff uh i want to get just real quick as uh you know we should always have and I, I got something uh i got yeah. fill some time 
also in this movie, and I don't think I've ever told the story on, on air, Angus Sampson uh, reprising his role uh, for like a hot second oh, as Tucker, yes. one of the, uh, one of the, what do you call it there? Uh, the two it, ghosts, it, the paranormal investigator, investigator guy, him and Lee Wanell. Lee yes. Wanell's the other one. Yeah. He's this big Australian dude who I met uh, <laughs> at a bar in Los Angeles uh, last year around uh, around uh, Thanksgiving time. My wife were, and I are just like, oh, we'll just go to this fun little bar, uh -huh. and it's kind of a dingy bar which we like. And I'm like, oh, cool, I can get like a fucking banquet beer. I can, I'll, I'll have a couple of Hell these. Yeah. Mm. And then all of a sudden they start doing karaoke and we're like, we should get out of here. I don't want to do karaoke. <laughs> but somehow it turned into we were all doing karaoke like, oh, wow, multiple times. And this dude, Angus Sampson and his crew roll in and I'm like, that's something. And he's just getting he is. I mean, I was hammered. He was getting hammered at the wow. other side of the bar. And what was being Australian? What was being Australian? Good and <laughs> hilariously, like there was some somebody's birthday was happening so everyone was like happy birthday kelly happy birthday kelly this one's for you so i'm kind of a <laughs> drunken jerk so i'm like happy birthday kelly i got a song for you and i sing oh. my song well, wait 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 what was the song come on i don't remember i don't even remember it's uh, shit. Uh, sure. but i go to the bathroom and he's in there and he's like all right mate it's your birthday isn't it and i'm like well, no, it's not. I said happy birthday to somebody else. <laughs> a person I don't know. Uh, yes, so, by, exactly. uh, by the way. Uh, uh, so that yeah, was no, I was being a drunk jerk. Sorry. No, I was being yeah. a drunk jerk. That's exactly. Oh, man. It, it's, it's great out there, isn't it? I'm like, it sure is, Angus <laughs> Samson. I liked you in Fargo season two. Talk to you soon. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, no, I wanted to pull up the woman who plays uh, Ty Simpkins, like, college buddy slash roommate yes. her name is sinclair daniel kind of like her first real big thing she did some tv she's incredibly entertaining in the movie yes. it was it was a nice like she brought a little bit of lightness to the movie yes. um you know because she is comic relief's kind of wrong but like her basically like it's a character whose life hasn't been ruined by the insidious monsters so yes. she's like she's still like a little more upbeat and whatever um and she also knows she's an insidious five which i think some people yes would 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 benefit from knowing you're in the insidious five you know who kind of didn't know she was in city in insidious five uh not for nothing was um hiyama boss uh, who oh, plays well, yeah, the, yes. the art professor who you know, she was uh, Marcia in in Succession. That was yeah. kind of what most people know her for. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, she was Logan's second ex-wife. Yeah. Uh, she's on a she's in a completely different movie. It's not yes. distracting, but it was like you're a scotch too serious for in well, it's like the, the Red Door art school cliche. Like I'm the serious teacher. Set up your work. These right. yeah. <laughs> we have to break you down before we build you back up. And I'm like, not in a freshman art right. seminar, by the way. You're <laughs> you are fucking doing yeah. figure drawing every fucking week. How about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So that was that was kind of weird. But you know, I'll say that you know the one thing just about um, you know, you said like rent it. Mm. I would say the vibe in the theater was pretty good. People yeah, were having totally. a good time. So, like, if you want that, like, communal horror thing, like, this movie will still bring it, you know, because there was a decent amount of eeriness afoot yes. in the movie, a lot of good scares, and not, like, cheap shit jump scares, no. like, things that, like, what this franchise, I think, on the whole is really good at, for the most part, is using shot composition for scares so like yep. you'll be just looking at a shot and the actor's doing something in the foreground and like you don't notice there's like a person standing off to the yes, side yeah. or something and like it's not always even acknowledged immediately uh and that kind of shit i always think is really really scary and it does that again in this movie I will say, uh, maybe final thought, before seeing, to your point, seeing in the theater, there is a great ew moment that I don't want to spoil here that the whole crowd went, myself included, but like, ah, ew. Uh, I, I know what you're talking about. And it was, it was awesome that we were in a room with like 50 people when that yes. happened because mm -hmm. everybody, no matter like, you know, amateur hour yeah. horror fan to yes. like hardened pro everybody was like -hee 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 -hee. Yeah. we all got real willie scott in that moment and it was uh it was a ton of fun so like yeah you know i would i would go check it out it would be interesting to see what kind of legs this movie has yeah. you know i mean the thing that's like it's gonna be what it's gonna be of course like we mentioned at the top like 
Tom Cruise is coming into theaters this week. So mm-hmm. this will this will get knocked a lot. And maybe, you know, then it does find more of a life on, on VOD. But like, check it out. I was actually, you know, kind of now doing the whole like full franchise rewatch into this one. It's a solid franchise. I think three is kind of the, the weakest of the bunch. But um, yeah, I don't know. And not to spoil anything, you do get a tiny bit of Lynn Shay in this movie, and it's Ooh. it's always nice to see her because she's fucking great, and she really does carry those other movies, especially the first one. The boss's sister, huh? Great. <laughs> yeah, that... <laughs> always. That is right, dude. Uh, now, 